Good day ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Drugs Milan Unboxing. It's a nerve-wracking weekend for us boxing fans here in South Africa because one of our favourite sons, Hickey Butler, is facing the former WBO junior flyweight champion of the world, Alvin Soto, in Mexico, in Mexico, in the WBC world title eliminator over 12 rounds. It's a final eliminator. The winner will get to challenge Ken Shiro Taraji of Japan for the WBC world title. Now, Hickey Butler is one of the South African greats. He is a two-weight world champion. He was WBA strawweight champion and he, a junior flyweight. He was also a unified WBA IBF as well as the ring uh, junior flyweight champion of the world. A magnificent feat that was. Now, it's been a while since then and the big question is, can Hickey Butler become a world champion again? We will have that answer on uh, Saturday night because he's up against a tough one. Now, uh, Alvin Soto, stylistically, he's not complicated, but uh, he was WBO world champion and he lost his title by a whisker in his last outing against Jonathan Gonzalez of Puerto Rico, but he won the title in a come from behind stoppage against Angel Acosta. And in that fight, it was a, it was a tough fight. He was behind on all the cards and he now of course now with a left hook in the final round and the referee stopped the fight. I hate to criticize the referee. I think it was a premature stoppage. I think he should have given Acosta at least a chance to hold. But he hurt Acosta with that left hook badly. And to Soto's credit, he's tenacious. He kept in the fight and he got himself in that position to nail Acosta in the final round. Now what Owen Soto has got going for him are a couple of things. He's got youth, he's 25 years old, and then he's got toughness and he's got power and strength. More than power, I would say. He's got those heavy hands. Everything he hits you with hurts. It's not that zap one and done sort of punch, punch, punching power. I think, for example, Hirato Kyoguchi, uh, who relieved Eki Butler of his world title, has slightly more venom and accuracy in his shots, especially to the body. But Soto can definitely hit. He's got heavy hands like a Golovkin. If he keeps hitting you, you're going to feel it. And uh, Soto's an aggressive, come forward, pressure fighter in a true Mexican style. His game is here medium range and on the inside. The long game is not ease. Now, on the downside, Soto's weaknesses, it's rather obvious. Um, he, he can be hit rather easily. So his defense really involves keeping his hands up. He comes in and when he throws those hooks, what I like about Soto is sort of like Mike Tyson. He steps into those hooks and uppercuts, puts all his weight behind it. But unlike Tyson, he hasn't got that bob and weave subtlety of head movement that Tyson has. So he, 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 he walks into you, he, he, put, he put, cuts over the ring, he comes straight at you and uh, he's, he's quite easy to hit Soto. And I think that is also part of the danger because you, people find Soto easy to hit. Uh, as did Acosta and he got nailed uh, and so does everybody but when you exchange with Soto he, ra he rattle off combinations on him he comes punching back he punch within those combinations he punches with you and when he nails you with those hooks they hurt uh, he does have that power as I've said so if if I look at Soto he's not the greatest of boxers he's strong he, he's physically strong he bullies his opponents around he'll twist their arms in the clinches like he tried to do to Gonzalez, and uh, he, he's physically imposing. He, he's got a thick body for a junior flyweight, and uh, he simply get he's, he's aggressive and he hits you with hard punches, and he keeps on coming. He's tenacious. So uh, stylistically, he's not. I don't think he's going to present a problem to Eki Butler. Eki has seen that before, and uh, there, there's not going to be a problem. He knows what sort of he's going to bring. The question is, uh, if Soto is that easy to fight, he wouldn't have won the WBO title and defended it three times. Uh, you'll lose it in your first title defense if you were just lucky to be there. So Soto is tenacious, and I think that the things that he does well, he does really well. He sits down on his punches. He's very strong. People don't seem to be able to keep him off. And uh, he, he takes a lot of shots, but he, but, 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 but he catches a lot of shots, but he takes them well. Uh, he doesn't really get hurt, he just walks through it. And that is uh, Alvin Soto. And you can get away with that when you're young. He's got a record of 19-2 and, and 13 knockouts. He can be outboxed. What bothers Soto is two things. I think movement, a lot of movement on your feet, and speed bothers, bothers Soto. I mean, that's what got Jonathan Gonzalez over the mark. He, and he squeaked by Soto. And, uh, and, and uh, 
That's how he appointed him by, 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 by using his speed, hitting him with a long punches and getting out of the way. Now, uh, Eki Butler, we know him well in South Africa. He is sort of an uh, aggressive boxer, if that makes sense. He's not a guy who's going to stick and move and be on his bicycle for 12 rounds. He'll stand and trade in spots and he'll box in spots. He's got a clever way of getting in with his punches. He feints a lot with the upper body, feints with his gloves, feints with his feet even. There's a lot of subtlety to the way he works. And I think he's definitely got the better hand speed than Soto. And I think he's got a better all-round skill set. If you look at his career, Soto is still, uh, we still don't know where he's going to go in the future and what he's still going to accomplish. But he's a far more accomplished fighter and uh, he has fought the better guys. I don't think Alvin Soto is as good a boxer as Rio Ichi Takuchi. I don't think he, he, he's, he's, he's technically as sound as uh, Nkosi Nati Joy, uh, two of Eki's best wins. Um, he is maybe stronger and he, and he does have power. I don't know if he's harder than Joy. I, luckily, I haven't been hit by him, but I, I think he's got power. But Eki has fought, I think, better guys than Soto before. But here is the thing, you know, uh, Eki Butler, after losing his title to Hiroto Kiyokuchi, he sat out, not to, we had all this trouble with COVID and, and cancelled fights. He was inactive for two years. And now, uh, about a year ago, uh, already, he's had, his, he's had his last fight. He came back against Jonathan Almarsson from the Philippines. And he didn't look like a shot fighter, definitely not. He didn't look really like a faded fighter to me. It took a few rounds to get into it, which surely you can expect from a guy that's been out of it for two years. And I think Almarsson was better than his record suggests. But Jonathan Almarsson isn't, an, isn't a top 10 fighter. He's, he's, he's quite away from that. He's a tough little journeyman. We'll see what he accomplishes in his career. But uh, Alvin Soto, for example, is ranked number six by Ring Eki, is number five. Soto and his more recent accomplishments, and Eki are more on his past accomplishments. But uh, Jonathan Almarsson will try to box with Eki, you know, fight in and out and, 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 and brawl in spots. Soto is not going to do that. It's going to be technically much easier. He's just going to come to Eki and bully him. And. Uh, so style-wise, it's fine. If it was, if this fight took place a few years ago, I would pick Eki to win a tough fight on points. I wouldn't have much doubt about that. But the problem is now we don't know whether Eki Butler is still really he can still compete on the very top level. Because all the Almasen fight showed us is that he's still a good fighter. He still looks world class, but he wasn't fighting a, a, a guy of a class of Alvin Soto. Soto, if this may have, may have just as well have been a WBO world title fighter, had Soto got that close decision and not Gonzalez. And uh, so Eki is up against it because he's also fighting in the other guy's hometown. Now, can you win on the road in Mexico? Yes, you can. You remember years back, Simpere and Onkai, a golden master, had that dream run where he beat both Arce brothers in Mexico. And Zolani Tete has also won a decision there. But uh, Nonkai is a different style than Eki. Um, he, he sticked and moved his way there and, uh, and, and he won by a wide margin. And uh, Zolani Tete scored some knockdowns and that makes a knockdown that makes for clear round. Now, if we look at Eki against, uh, say for instance, Ryoichi Taguchi, he won that fight by one point on all the scorecards in Japan on the road. And uh, the one against Joy, he also, it was also a close fight, although that's years back. But my point being is when Eki fights his absolute best opponents, he, he wins a close decision. He doesn't run away with it. Okay, and if you're going to win a one-pointer or a two-pointer on the road against a promoter's guy, um, correct me in the comment sections if you can think of other places or if I'm wrong, but I think the only place you can really do that is in Japan. And that's why I love Japan. They are really uh, honorable people. They don't want anything handed to them. And a visiting fighter, I feel, can really get a fair shake in Japan. Uh, look at what happened to Eki in the Philippines when he fought a uh, uh, Filipino guy. I dropped his name now, but a very controversial fight, which gave him the fight against uh, Kiyoguchi. Uh, uh, not Kiyoguchi, Taguchi, eventually. And uh, there, the referee helped, uh, helped his opponent, with, who was cut badly and robbed him, robbed him of a, of a, of, of a Tika or victory. And... Uh, I don't think I don't think he's going to be able to win a, a close one-two point decision in Mexicali, and I think he will know. He knows it. And I'm sure Colin knows it. 
And I think that is a bit of a problem. And uh, the X fact factor is we don't really know where he's at. We know he's not shot. We know he's not, he's not uh, badly faded or anything if we look at his last fight, but his last fight was not on a, 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 against a guy on the level of Alvin Soto. So this is what worries me. Now, if I'm, if I'm in Alvin Soto's corner and I'm trying to think how he's going to approach this fight, uh, Icky takes a few rounds to get into it. So I think Soto will try and get off to a, a, a quick start and try and bulldoze Icky, maybe to try and get a stoppage. Uh, and I think conversely, Eki will sort of also takes a few rounds to get going. Eki will maybe get off to a quicker than usual start. We see him do, do that against Ryoichi Taguchi, who was a slow starter. Eki then suddenly became a quicker starter and bang bang those earlier rounds. So I think the first few rounds will be interesting. Now, I think Eki's got the better feet. I think he's got the better straight shots. Uh, I think he's going to he's, he's going to find Alan Soto with a jab. Soto sometimes sets up with a, a jab, but he's not consistent with his jab. He's not much of a jabber. He's a hooker and uppercut, and he comes in and he bulls you. And uh, I think Eki needs to, to to take the shots from wrong range. And when Soto comes in, Soto has a habit of squaring up when he throws those hooks. Uh, then he needs to nail him with an uppercut and get out. Uh, what he mustn't do is try and go in an extended exchange because Soto will nail him then. So Eki needs to take the long shots and he needs to give him angles and he needs to get in and out. Eki has got that awkward rhythm. He's got a kind of style that will throw uh, Soto off. Colin Nathan said that he's a difficult style for Soto. I agree. Um, but then again, Soto is a difficult style for Eki as well. Because when Eki lost his straw title against Byron Roas, Roas wasn't a very sophisticated guy. Strong, tough, like Soto, and he kept going forward. Eki was punching him, but so, uh, Roas kept moving him back and he throwing the harder shots. Now, Roas, I think, is busier than, 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 than Soto is. Soto, I think, is more explosive than, 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 than Roas. But I, I think uh, when Eki is consistently backed up and you close him in and keep him backing up, uh, that is when he, when he battles. And that is what uh, Alvin Soto is going to do, but he's going to take some punches throwing it. So the only thing that will surprise me here, Heki is 33 wins, uh, four losses, only 10 knockouts. His weakness is he hasn't got uh, power. I worry that Heki will be able to keep uh, Soto away from him, you know, because even if you step around him, if you can't get his respect, you can't get him to think twice, He's going to get you eventually, and you're going to hit him, but Soto is also going to hit you with those hooks. So who are the judges going to score for? And that's the kind of thing that worries me. Now, uh, Eki and Colin Nathan are special people to me. I've got in, at the back of my wall there, there's a picture of myself handing the ring magazine belt uh, to Eki of Colin uh, looking on. So I wish him all the best. He's a great human being, and, and I, I really pulling for him to pull off another great one and beat Alvin Soto because then Ken Shiro will have to take notice and Eki is in the great shot at winning another world title with WBC no less. But uh, it's hard for me to predict that Eki is going to pull this thing off because if we looked uh, at his fight uh, between that, uh, that controversy in the Philippines until he fought uh, Ryoichi Takuchi, it was slightly, it was less than a year of inactivity. Now, from his last fight against Almas into this fight, we've got a year of inactivity. How's that going to uh, affect his timing and his reflexes? I know he's got good, good sparring with Simpiva Konko and, and DJ Krill, but that is an X factor. At this stage of his career, he's been through many wars. Uh, Simpiwa Konko, Nkosinati Joy, uh, Byron Rojas, uh, Hirata Kiyoguchi, all those were tough, bruising fights. And here he's in it uh, uh, yet again. When is the gas tank going to be empty? I know Colin is not going to let Eki ship punishment round after round after round. He'll, he'll pull him out probably. Um, but I don't know if uh, uh, Alvin Soto has got that sort of sophistication to be that consistent against Eki. But in the end, uh, my feeling is Eki is going to definitely have his moments. Perhaps early on, I think his jab is going to work. He's going to eat Soto with a right hand. He'll count him with an uppercut or two. But Eki is not one that's going to stick and move and be on his bicycle like uh, Jonathan Gonzalez, who was a southpaw, by the way, which may, makes it harder for a guy like Soto. Uh, Eki, I don't think he's going, to, he's, he's going to stick and move quite to that effect, and I don't think you're going to get a decision like uh, Gonzalez got there in Mexicali. And uh, that is what worries me, and that's 
I've been going back and forth on this one. It's very hard to say exactly where Heck is at. We're going to know uh, on Saturday. I just think uh, Eki is not going to be able to knock Soto down. He's not going to be able to visibly hurt him. So he's going to have to put on a Pichiroso performance and completely a box Soto. And uh, I don't know if he can do it at this stage of his career because I know there will be, be exchanges. And I kind of think when those exchanges happen, Hickey's always sort of been susceptible to the odd flash knockdown. He's got very good recuperative powers. He's up again and it's quick. But he's susceptible to flash knockdowns. Mostly he gets nailed with a left hook. And uh, I think at some stage in the exchange, my feeling is Soto is going to score a knockdown there. And uh, that's going to help him get over. And I think it's going to be a close fight. There will be some moments from Eki on the outside and with his speed but I think Soto is just going to hit him with the harder shots and be the aggressive guy and that's the way the judges are going to score it so if I have to put my head on the block I'm going to say Galvin Soto is going to win this one uh, with a decision that is perhaps much closer than it appears on the judges card but uh, I hope I'm wrong I've been wrong quite a couple of times the last few months so I really hope I'm wrong here I just have to call it the way I see it there's a big X factor in here. Everybody in the boxing world is picking sort out to win by a wide decision or a stoppage. Um, but it's a very hard fight to, to analyze here because we're not sure if Heki, with all the inactivity in starts and stop, can still fight at that very highest level. Because he hasn't done it in a long time. The last time he was fighting at that level was when he lost against Kiyoguchi. And that's what we need to find out. And that is the biggest X factor is Heki Butler more so than Alvin Soto. I think it's pretty predictable what he's going to bring. Um, but we'll see. But I have to go. I put my head on the block for Alvin Soto to win a decision there. Uh, I won't be surprised if he manages to stop Heki from accumulation of punishment. I will not be shocked if Heki pulls up another brilliant show and outboxes Soto. That won't shock me anything, any, any, anyhow. I will be very happy and we will have a few drinks and we'll celebrate. Only thing that will really surprise me if Hickey is able to stop Soto or knock him down a couple of times. That will surprise me. So we wish Hickey Butler all the best and uh, we will all be watching there and go and get him. So Africa is behind you. Until we see each other again, please remember to keep those hands up.